A great uh, opportunity we have this week to uh, to play two uh, teams back to back in short time that are both top 25, I think, RPI teams. Uh, one at home, one away. Uh, Wisconsin has given us fits over the years, and um, it's a, a great opportunity for us. As I said last week about this time, when we were getting ready to play Michigan State and getting ready to play Indiana, it's a great opportunity for us to. Uh, embrace this challenge, grow from it, and uh, build a resume that can put us in postseason play. So we got that part done. Now we got to go do it again and again and again until the season's over. So uh, we're uh, we had a good practice yesterday, and hopefully I'll have a good one today, and we'll be ready. I think we're healthy. Uh, we are. Uh, we're uh, we're going to be as ready as we can be. Uh, but Wisconsin's a bit of a uh, anomaly because they've been so good for so long doing the exact same thing over and over again uh, against us, against a lot of teams, and they're, they're a tough, tough one to get. Uh, they've been really good at last second shot clock, last second game situations, incredibly to break your heart. And uh, so we got to make sure that we do everything we can to put them in those situations or take it away from them at the end. So our, our kids are, are focused. Uh, Prosperity has not been a friend to us so far this year. Where we, when we play well, uh, we have not uh, lost a little that edge we need. So we gotta we gotta um, be come out there with, with, like the uh, with, with that aggression that we need, like the angry aggression to go and get a W. Hey, coach. Uh, Derek was kind of saying after the Indiana game that he's noticed that this team really now kind of enjoys playing on the defensive end as much as the offensive end. Has that really been? kind of a change in mentality the last couple of weeks, or you know, have you kind of seen that trending up? Well, I think oh, just about everybody that ever goes to high school and college does not say, what do you enjoy the most? I enjoy defense. It's just not part of it. Um, and so uh, everybody has to evolve in that area. But I think this team is, and they can talk to talk and do all those things, but I think they start to realize that if I play better defense, we're going to be able to run. We're gonna be, I'm going to be on the floor longer. I'm going to be able to do better things, and they enjoy it. So when, they, when you have some success playing defense, really playing it at, your, at the best, I think that's when it resonates with them that, hey, this is the answer. John, you guys had a lot of success for most of the game on half, uh, you know, just playing them straight up, basically. It, is that something that where you saw like a turning point in the season? You said, well, let's see how these guys can handle it, almost like a test, and then now you have more confidence in your big guys? Yeah, like, yeah I think that um, even though we did get in some foul trouble in that game, but that part, yeah. part of it was self-inflicted. Uh, but we have to, uh, yeah, playing, how you played him uh, is we got to have a lot of things in the, in the kitty to be able to play him because he is so good. His numbers are so good at scoring close to the basket. And so between him and then, you know, Nigel Hayes, nobody even talks about him as much anymore. And here is this horse that is as good a player in the country. And so those two are really a matchup problem for every team. And uh, how we play him, I think we're still trying to figure it out. What's the best way to approach uh, playing him in a game? Because he, he's got that knack for being able to score inside and also really be a good passer. That gave you some confidence, though, in DJ. Yeah, I think that, that we, we did some different things against uh, Indiana, that we could gain some confidence in rotations and how we do that. Uh, and then individually, yeah, for Mo to play him that well in that game, Mark Donnell as well, that was encouraging for us. Just to follow up on that, because uh, Northwestern doubled Hap mm -hmm. a lot, and it, as much as it affected him, it seemed to affect the residuals of the offense, yeah. you know, kind of turning him into a, a passer and, and stuff. Did, did you did you like what you saw from Northwestern? Because you guys played him straight up more so with DJ, right? In your yeah, performance? yeah. I mean, we analytically looked at uh, you know what what result what the results of Northwestern's uh, doubles opposed to ours, and I think we got some some options there uh, that we can utilize. But and Northwestern went off; not, they doubled off Nigel Hayes the entire game and then scrambled back out of it, and uh, so it, it will be. You know, I think we got to have a lot of ideas in our head, and hopefully we're. We're good at all of them and not, you know, average it at all of them. So trying to put it all together, um, it's going to be a challenge because because they're a very smart team. Uh, uh, you know, Koenig and Showalter are so smart and they've been played together so long. I mean, and they got the two Final Fours and most of that guys have played in those big games, so they're really good at it. So you're not going to surprise them, but hopefully we can we can turn, get some create some turnovers or create some tough 
twos for them to make as well. Andrew? Hey coach, has there any, been any discussion between you and Mo about the way he reacts on the court when fouls are called, whether there's a concern like that he, he gets any sort of reputation? Uh, I think early, early in his career, I think it's very, uh, and I don't want to sound like I am uh, being prejudiced here or, 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 or uh, Mark is very European to have a lot of drama on fouls, whether it was soccer, basketball, there just seems to watch there's a lot of drama. And we've tried to, uh, to scale that down. But I, I see that he's trending in the right direction of just playing and not getting so emotionally uh, upset or um, uh, in, in, in drawn, emotionally drunk by what happens to him in the game. So I, I think he's, he's, he's on the right path. But we're not going to change for years what really, you know, he, you're going to do what you see every day. He's a big uh, basketball fan, so he's been watching European basketball and playing it for a while. And that's, the only, my, that's my, my only explanation because I also had a young man from Germany, uh, uh, Johannes Erber, was very similar to that. Uh, they both are, were very involved in games and always seem to be tussling or something in the game and I think it's indigenous not indigenous but it's part of the the, the, the habits that they form as younger players and then as far as what you said in your in your open as, as far as uh, success being an enemy I mean, is that just a natural thing or is there any, any trick with, with this team no, to try to I think I think with mo with most people and, and we're no different good is the enemy of great and as soon as you do some things good you start to slack off a little bit and that's our job as coaches to make sure they see that, yet you still want to smell the roses a little bit and not just be so, you can never smile. Uh, so if that's, that, that's that, that, that point that we have to handle as coaches really well with them. But I think that hopefully between some of our disappointing losses this year, the Ohio State game, when it came after the Indiana win, right? I believe it came right after the Indiana, and, and Indiana win. They hopefully they've learned some lessons, you know, from that. John, you mentioned Wisconsin's consistency and the things they've done well for a long time. What is the the biggest key for any team to finish a game against them? You got it. You got it. You can, they're not beating themselves. They're just not going to beat themselves. So you can't beat yourself. And whether it's I, I saw when they lost to Nebraska. You know, the kid missed two foul shots that, that could possibly could have made a big upset for Nebraska. Um, they, have, they have just been able to, to be so good down the stretch. And most of it is because of the continuity they've had in their program, that, that their, their juniors and seniors have a lot of experience by the time they get there. And like no other team in the Big Ten, the continuity is just amazing. Coaching staff, the whole deal. And that's, that's the secret in their sauce right now, that uh, whether it was a guy waiting five years to play uh, or a guy that is, you know, as a sophomore is maybe in there and out, in there and out, he learns how to win. They learn how to win and they do a great job with it. The other thing is, uh, you mentioned on the radio, getting tangled up once with a ref on the court. Have yeah. you ever had any close calls with players? No, I, I don't recall that. I'm sure there, there has been. I don't recall that. Um, but I, I think I'm better off hitting a ref than a player, I think, of running into a, and, uh, a ref than a player because they're not the size. I would not like to, to run into some of the big guys that are out there right now. I was watching the, the Purdue game last night, and, uh, uh, there's, and the big head from Rutgers. I don't want to run into those two. I, I don't think they're going to be shooting threes over by me, but that, that wouldn't have a good ending. But and no, I've never, I don't recall it, but the sidelines are usually deeper everywhere. And I can see that's, that, that could always be a problem in a place like Indiana.